What's up guys, Mr. Vampire coming at you on YouTube. And on my build video, I've been getting a lot of comments about is my build still viable? Would I still recommend it at this point in the game? And the answer is 100% yes. Here, I'm currently showing you the badges that I run with. It's changed since I first made the video because I figured out how to play the game a little differently. And I've almost got his badges completely maxed. But... In order to clear up the air of would I still recommend using this player in NBA 2K? Absolutely, and here's why. I got two full game plays for you. Uh, one against a team that we just full swept, some clips, and then a team against a uh, game against a team that is probably the best team me and my buddy Rob here faced all night. So here we are learning in the lineups. This is the first full game. We just hopped onto the court to face these guys. Inbound the ball. Immediately playing defense. Like, this build, like, the defensive stats aren't that high, but it still works. Rebound for me right here. Dev up. A little behind the back. A little cook. Sending him up. Sending him up. I'm not a meta guard. Like, you will see... I'm not good with the fades. I missed like my first few shots here, I believe. I even think I have a stand-up one lay in by my center. But I I can't shoot off dribble in this game. Like not as good as I wish I could. Like I think in the second gameplay I sell in a few times. I also sell a little bit on the uh standstills of just shooting off the hesitation, go in for a layup, layup all over this guy. And now that I've made, seen the bucket, the ball go in the bucket, it's just all downhill from there for them. But yeah, so you'll see me make a few mistakes. I'm going to leave them in. Green up right here. I find my shooting rhythm because I've seen the ball go in. And now it's just time to cook up. Sitting here. Now, no offense to Rob. He's got the build that you want to run with this. Glass cleaning lockdown, another three for me right here. But it doesn't have the right version of it. Rob has the version where it doesn't shoot. He's seven foot three and he's slow as all hell. I have a friend of mine who has a different version of it. Uh, it's a six foot eleven. It's faster. It's got a seventy plus three ball. And that's the version you pretty much want to run with this guy. And again, you got to use the defense that I talked about in my build video. Of you just cover the top while your center covers the paint. Little jab step around the screen, go in, dunk it all over the center. Like this build, they call it a scoring machine, and that's the whole point of it. I knew he's going to sit there and come up on me, so I decided to drive baseline, get a windmill, and fall on my ass. The reason why they call it a, a scoring machine is because it's made to score. And if you know what you're doing, if you're not going to be lazy about it, it's because in a few of these clips, I was lazy, and instead of going into the post, I tried to comp uh, create something off the dribble again. Go in, duck on the center, but he jumps out of it. And I also make mistakes on this build. Like, everyone's going to make mistakes. Like, I get take over here, jab step. I think I do an unnecessary sham god and turn the ball over. Yep, right there. Unnecessary sham god, turn the ball over. Sitting there playing defense. Get there on the contest for the shot. He boards it. I probably should have shot it there, but I wanted to try to dunk on the center because I knew he'd be running back down there. Uh, but he jumps out of it. I think he jumps out of the last one as well. Like, I get the ball back from Rob here. I do triple threat up at the top. Triple threat is your best friend with this build. It's really good at it. So here we go. Yep, that was going to be a dunk animation where he falls on the I'm floor, but the, the center jumped out of it like he'd done the whole game. So here we go. We're just going to show a couple of clips here from people before we ended up going against the teams that were a little better. Cooking up a little bit, I going I don't know what 360 I'm doing. windmill. <laughs> My screens are so much and better. And then I think I get, though. I think I shoot the ball here. I'm just slow. Like little, yep, he doesn't come guard me, so I just it's shoot so the mad. three. Right. Uh, Hall Big of Fame, bodies. limitless range, yes. and range extended. He plays bodies. the switch there. Oh uh, I go goodness. back behind it, do a Skywalker dunk. Windmill, according to Rob, that was an <coughs> unnecessary park dunk, but whatever. See, like, I Here, keep doing triple threat jab step, go in, 360 windmill again. Yeah, I, just want... like I said, I love using a triple threat with this build. Now, I'm here's a good possession. Me. Sit there, cook yeah, up. I'm setting my man up. Mess him you. up with the sham guy going in. The so... game screws me, makes me go for a hop step instead of a dunker. 
a dunk, but then I'm Rob getting, sets up, gives me a murder Dude, opportunity, and just dunk all over the center for a game. Oh, and as you dead. can see, he's literally <laughs> dead. So, here we go. Here's the final gameplay. This is against, I believe it was a Superstar 1 and an All-Star 3. Uh, are they comp? No. But out of the, I think, six or seven games Rob and I played that day, this was the best team we ended up facing. And like I said, I made mistakes. I didn't shoot fast enough off of hesitations. I didn't shoot well off of faders. But me and Rob just stay composed and were able to end up beating this team, even though they're running the meta lineup and they ran... Well, we saw them before. We were on the spot when they were on this court. They lost. We beat the guys that beat them. Then they came to try to beat us. And their whole game plan was the center sets the screens and the guard fades off of it like every guard does in this game. So here we go. Here's the first step. Boom. I just didn't shoot quick enough off the hesitation. If you don't shoot fast enough when you could do a hesitation, you have to watch the whole hesitation animation play out before you get to shoot it. The way you round that is as soon as you start the hesitation, you shoot. You sit there, play good defense. Rob gets the board, kicks out to me, standstill shot, that's green. Well, no. I was early on that one, but you know I make those shots. I, I'll i make a few of those later into the game as well. It's just how I play. I'm good at the spot-up shooting. So I'm sitting here cooking up. He gives, gives up an open lane. I go and lay it up. Rob thinks I should have been blocked there, but that's where the badges come into play. If you look into the description of badges... It tells you a lot more, and one of the things with Giant Slayer is not only does it help you finish layups over centers, who are, or not just centers, but people who are taller than you, it also says that it gives you like a nerf to how often you're going to be blocked. You don't get blocked as much. So here I'm just being a bot, dribbling, try to shoot the fader, I'm late, Rob gets screwed out of the board, like I said, I can't be a meta guard. I'm better at that normally, but just this game, I couldn't do it for whatever reason. I get pushed out of the way because of the screen. Not to worry, he sucks at fading as well. I get sit there, try to pass back down to Raw, but some shenanigans happen down in the paint, trying to help me out. Now, the reason why I'm saying I hate this build of Rob's is he's legitimately the worst screen setter I think I've ever played with. Try to shoot off dribble again, tire and miss it. Rob gets the rebound. Tries to get an A and one, but it doesn't end up working. Like, me and Rob will sit there and talk in the party about how big his guy is, how, like, strong his guy is, but he literally sets, like, the worst screens ever. And then right as I say that, he gets a kill on a screen. But those happen so few and far between that, one, I wasn't ready to shoot the fade, and two, because of the last two ones being late, I tried to release that one early, and I released it too early. So again, like I said, I'm not a meta guard. Look, can you use this to be a meta guard? Yes, you probably want to turn on your shot meter for the fades, but I don't like playing with the shot meter. It gets annoying to me after a while. So we sit there, we end up switching. I come guard the outside, he goes to guard the paint, and he guards it by jumping. But, hey, it happens. We're just going to stay composed. We're sitting here talking to each other, coming up with a game plan of what we're going to do next. And I was like, just don't jump just to jump. You have Hall of Fame Intimidator. All you have to do is be there. So here we go. I get stuck on the guy. He steps up to stop the three. I switch back to him. He goes down there, and the guy goes right back up to it, even though that's exactly what Rob did last time, and he did the exact same thing this time. Don't know why the guy went up to delay it up, but it happens. So we're sitting here trying to play defense on the inbound again. Guy comes to set screen, doesn't work. Switch to stay outside. The guard throws a Stevie out of bounds, and now I'm doing push-ups to let them know that this is light work. So inbound into Rob, passes back to me. Wide open lane, I'm just going to go for the dunk. I mean, come on, if you're going to give it to me, I'm going to take it. Uh, even though it is a scoring machine, no when to pass. There are a few times, sit here, boom, guy doesn't cover me on the three-pointer, I'm going to make that. Uh, there were a few times where, like, they doubled me off the screen and they jumped when Rob's cutting. Pass, pass to the player who's got the best chance of scoring. Like, right here, I got doubled a little bit, but I really just threw a scary. 
Tried to go for a layup here, and then it screwed me again, just like it did last game. So I passed on the Rob, who just body blocked his man out of the paint and went up for a layup. I really hate sometimes where you try to go for a layup or a dunk, and the game's just like, oh, you want a hop step? And it's just, it's annoying. Sitting here trying to step up. Set up thing. Uh, I think I got plucked there for a bit, but then like unpluckable kicked in for once in its life. So the guy jumped at me. I passed to Rob, who had a wide open dunk. I think a similar thing happens here. Like I go in, the center jumps at me, the guard jumps at me, and I just pass to Rob, and he dunks between the two jumpers. Now I think this is when Rob starts to get a little, a little ahead of himself and tries to be a little. Game changer. He passes me wide open three. And again, this is going to touch on to me talking about just feeling himself too much because there's two more instances later in this game where I should have had that. He shouldn't have gone up with that. He got the board. He should have passed to me here for game, but he decided to try to dunk on the center because he was feeling himself, gets blocked, trying to sell my shit. So we're sitting here playing, 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 playing defense, talking about just getting a stop here. Guard goes in, ends up trying to pa pass this to the big man. I get stuck on the big man, get back out to the guard. Big man goes up, tries to go up against Rob. I think he either gets blocked or throws it out of bounds here. Uh, guard goes in and misses the layup there, gets the board over it. The guard misses the shot. Rob gets the board, passes out to me. Comes to set me a screen again, like, I should have shot that mid-range. I legitimately should. I was fully stopped. Rob here, doing whatever that is, tries to sell. Should have kicked to me here. Doesn't go back up with it, but we end up winning the game, so I'm not mad at him. But yeah, that's just how it is. Like, people ask me, is this game, is Bill reliable? Yes.